Sometimes you have to work up your courage and look the truth straight in the eye to admit that you were wrong and to better yourself. Today, ladies and gents, is not one of those days because what we just witnessed is CDPR absolutely getting annihilated by their own fan base in their own live stream. Not gonna lie, some of these comments were definitely a lot more entertaining than the entire live stream, but and that is a big but, ladies and gents. The last minute patch notes that have literally just been posted by CDPR came in to save the day the very last minute because update 1.3 is indeed, and I'm not joking, the biggest and most ambitious update yet. It also introduces three new free DLCs that we're gonna check in this video. So let's talk about these changes, the notes that I got from the live stream, and also showcasing these here in this video. Starting things off, of course, with the three new free DLCs. Once you log in update 1.3, you're going to notice a brand new section called downloadable content. And if you access it, you're going to notice all of the free DLCs in the new update. Now we have three of them. One of them is called Alternative Appearance for Johnny Silverhand. The second one is called V's New Jacket. And the final one is a brand new vehicle called Quartz Bandit. Now starting with the jackets, these were showcased in the beginning of the live stream. You actually get these from Victor as soon as you finish the first mission where you meet Dexter Deshaun, he is going to contact you or sometimes after that to tell you that he's going to give you three new, well, two new jackets. The first one is called the Luminescent Punk Jacket. It's completely red with like red lights and stripes. Looks pretty awesome. And the second one is called the Multi-Layered Jacket that looks a bit more normal in the regular range with just a little bit more fur around the neck area. Now, one of the things that I quickly realized about these jackets is that even though the V in the foot was level 50, these jackets spawned as rare items with no additional mod slots. So I'm kind of hoping that that was RNG, bad RNG to be honest, or at least I'm hoping that CDPR will fix this in time before update 1.3 goes live. I haven't checked the patch notes yet, ladies and gents, so yeah, that's it. The second one is going to be the vehicle. This is called the Quartz Bandit. You get this from the Badlands, by the way, most probably after finishing the first mission for Panem. So Rogue will contact you and she will give you the information about a new free ride that you can go ahead and get, which is this really awesome Quartz Bandit car right here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm definitely feeling that this was the biggest highlight of the entire live stream. Like, this definitely seems to be the most substantial Potential DLC piece, I guess, that was added in the new update, but it's not just that, the developers have mentioned that this is also one of the cars in the game with some of the best handling, so you might want to get your hands on it, it also looks awesome, like the back area over there definitely looks awesome, but most important, it also comes with some really decent horsepower, 360 for what seems to be just a like smaller sized car. But um, there's some other changes that were added in there just for like driving, you already saw the minimap zoom, now we also kind of know how this works and it was also quite difficult for CDPR to implement this for some reason. Now this doesn't include a dynamic map zoom like one one of the mods that we featured here on this channel. In fact, it just zooms out the minimap as soon as you enter a vehicle and it stays like that and it gives you a lot more information ahead so you can take those turns a lot more easier without crashing. The final one is the Johnny Silverhand alternate appearance. We kind of got used to something like this from the Witcher series, like, yeah, Yennefer also got some of these, all some of the other characters got them as well. Well, Johnny Silverhand obviously will get at least this one, probably a lot more in the future too, but this one looks pretty interesting. To activate this uh, appearance for Johnny Silverhand, you actually have to enter the main options menu, additional content tab, and make sure you activate that from there. Again, kind of like Witcher 3 as well. Now this changes Johnny Silverhand's appearance to look a little bit more punk with a side cut hairstyle and, you know, different jacket. I'm kind of a fan of it, but not as much as the default look, like I definitely feel that the default look looks way better and way higher quality and more unique to be perfectly honest, but if you like it, you can rock it and see it in missions. Another change that they have showcased, which I think is quite substantial, is um, some of the crafting changes in the game. They showcased bulk crafting finally being added in Cyberpunk 2077, which means you can now well, craft a lot more items in one single go rather than having to constantly click on the icons to craft the next batch. So you can now control the number of items way easier and it's gonna take way less time, I guess. Um, the next bit that they have changed, they have showed this again, is the reset perk. 
so this basically resets your perks but not your ability points so this change really invites you to go ahead and experiment with other builds and respec on the fly if you're that kind of you know gamer that likes changing things every now and then and keep things fresh now on top of that we also have a few perk fixes along the line like for example we have three here that were mentioned one of them is hit the deck now it properly works on knockdowns and staggered enemies another one is can't touch this properly gives you immunity to blind and another one is hacker overlord grants you a recipe for the quick hack that it's supposed to give you but i believe there's going to be a lot more in the patch notes that we will read in just a little bit now the reason they didn't implement a reset attribute as well is because that is a little bit more difficult on their end it seems that it affects a lot more than just these perks that you get it also has some dependencies on how it affects dialogues and some of the other unlockables like doors so it seems that they are working on a way to reset attributes it's just that it's going to take a little bit longer for that to be fully implemented now everything from this point on in the stream was kind of boring i'm not gonna lie i was sitting there and i was just like Man, this is way too cringy, dude. Like, even, like, for CDPR standards, this was definitely the cringiest livestream yet. They should have definitely brought, like, Paul Sasko, because he has a way better understanding of how livestream works. I think that they should probably prepare a bit better for these. Nonetheless, mirror emotes have also been fixed in the new update. Not gonna lie, when they tested the mirror, I was kind of hoping for an appearance change, but it's not making in this update. They did, however, fix those expressions that were broken before, so now you will see V actually performing those expressions like smiling, getting angry, and so on and so forth. Another really cute change, not gonna lie, is for Nibbles, you know, your small little cat companion that you can get in your apartment. So they have made some improvements to him and they added new animations and behaviors and also new spots he can go into. Like the new one that we saw here was him going into the bathroom and kind of using, I believe, the litter. Um, yeah, it was a bit choppy for me, but the footage you show it a little bit better. Finally, yeah, we have better code entries in your journal. So now if you go next to missions, you're gonna see better code entries you can go ahead and access right away. It should give you a better understanding of maybe some of the objectives ahead and also the world of Cyberpunk 2077. But most important, they finally added a way for you to call NPCs right from there. They accidentally actually did it on stream, but I'm glad they did it because, you know, it's, it's annoying to call NPCs in Cyberpunk in update pre 1.3 so that's just my own opinion but with that out of the way let's go over some of the other changes as i've said this patch right here is the biggest of them all yet at least according to um, cdpr but it definitely seems it is it's super lengthy so i'm just gonna go over some of the highlights that i found important um the first big update well some of the first big updates or changes here are the increased number of auto save slots yeah they have gone up to 20 from 10 that they were previously and quick saves went from 3 all the way up to 10 across all of the platforms. Furthermore, they've also added a filter for quest items in the backpack and quest item tags from miscellaneous job items will now be removed after finishing associated quests, allowing you to sell or drop them, which was a really big annoyance um, well, in the previous update. Also, it is now possible for V to be rotated in the inventory screen with the mouse and you don't have to just uh, like press A and D on the keyboard to do that. And players will now properly be able to craft a quest quick hack even if they once crafted it and then got rid of it is another one of those um, really good changes that uh, make a lot of sense. Now in terms of balance changes they've also done a few really interesting ones to NPCs and how aggressive they are. So detection times of enemies now depend on game difficulty in the new update as enemies on easy and normal difficulties will now detect the players slower. meanwhile the ones on very hard will now detect the players faster. At the same time, enemies on very hard difficulty and only that difficulty alone will now be more aggressive when searching around when they are in the alerted state. And CPD will no longer react and turn hostile because of a dead body in open world activities by the way. And another one for the NCPD will now also react to hitting NPCs with a non-lethal weapon. 
A big one, by the way, in case you didn't uh, play with this, the optical camo cyberware will now be available for purchase from the Ripper Docs. Funny enough, this was in the game's files and was actually fixed fully like a couple of patches ago. I believe it was back in patch 1.23 that already introduced the optical camo. You just had to like use cheats or like mods to get it, but it absolutely worked since then. Well, now it is now added in the game, which um, yeah makes a lot of sense, I guess. Now, there's also some really interesting changes to loot. There's some rebalancings in there, but also new items that have been added in the loot pool, I guess. So they fixed the various unlootable items. And most important, they've also added um, Adam Smasher now drops loot additionally to its access token in the mission once you defeat him. So yeah, it definitely makes a lot more sense. Also fixed an exploit where players could loot the XBD dealer stock from his body after killing him in this um, disaster piece of mission. So yeah, no longer the trick works, which was kind of funny because you could get a lot of uh, BDs there, but I guess, yeah, um, CDPR came in and fixed this. Um, they've also removed duplicate loot from an open world activity in Pacifica, and they added loot to an empty loot container behind a SEX shop in the Corpo Plaza. Now alongside with this we also have some improved NPC behaviors. Now one of the developers talked about the fact that yeah the team is working on the AI and there's going to be some improvements it's just that it takes a lot longer. So some of these missions here have some changes to the way some of these NPCs behave like for example in the Don't Fear the Reaper Adam Smasher's footsteps are now audible when he's running after V. So that's one of the changes. Another one is to the pickup mission Royce Minion will no longer T-pose after applying short um, like circuit on Royce, but um, we have some general changes to some of the other NPCs. Like for the drones, they will now look destroyed after they explode. NPCs will no longer keep hiding in cover after being flanked. And finally, disabled mirror interactions during combat. Again, I urge you to go ahead and check out the full patch notes if you want to. There's a lot of fixes over here and a lot of like things added in the new update that honestly just takes me too long to actually go ahead and read and they basically went over everything like literally every single aspect of the game including quests including the environments including the game the open world everything else and the gigs is there so yeah go ahead and check it out we will cover maybe some of these in different videos if there's anything substantially found or secret ones as well but um otherwise this is it with the update now how do i feel about it i'm kind of you know okay this is exactly what i was expecting from update 1.3 and the dlcs on top actually bring you know make it a little bit better i'm gonna give this update a 7 out of 10 maybe an 8 out of 10 because it introduces these free dlcs and we finally got it all bundled up but you know what feel free to let me know down below what is your opinion of the patch notes not the live stream everybody hated the live stream the actual patch notes and i'll see you guys in the next one